I'm first going to look at you in the impact position because it's the most important. Everything the ball does, how far it goes, how high it goes, how much it spins and curves, is a direct response to the laws of physics in motion at the brief moment of impact. On the left is Tiger hidden in iron. This is video I took at last year's US Open. On the right is Grant Wade hitting the driver. Grant was a PGA Tour player during the 90s and now is one of the top instructors of tour players. Grant's teaching partner is a good friend of mine, Joe Mayo, who lives in Las Vegas. Grant was considered by many as having one of the best and most fundamentally sound golf swings. At impact, they both have the majority of their weight on the left side. In fact, the average pro will have 85 to 90% of their weight on the left side at impact. I've drawn a red block from the center of their ankles to the top of their head, and you can see that the red line off their left foot is passing right through their belt buckle showing how the center of their mass is right on top of their left foot. They both have extended arms through impact. Their elbows are close together and not separating. Having extended arms and weight forward allows them to control the low point of their arc of their swing. When hitting the iron, this fundamental allows the placement of the low point to be in front of the ball so that they hit the ball first and then the ground, producing the maximum compression of the golf ball. These fundamentals also allow for the highest level of consistency in controlling the face angle and club path during impact so that you in turn have the highest level of consistency in hitting whatever optimal ball flight you want. Okay, so if you hit this ball, okay, where would the divot be? Divot's going to be in front of the line. Okay. And if you stood here all day and hit balls, how many times would the divot be behind that line? Uh, zero. Zero, right. There's Mike hitting 17 shots with 17 divots in front of the line. Hey Tony, here you are at impact on one of the holes. I think it's the first part three we played on the front nine. The heavy at impact, I've got Tiger at uh, just past impact. Let's look at a couple of things here. One, you can you can see that you have a, here's your left arm, and then here's your shaft. So you, you have reverse shaft lean. So the shaft should actually be leaning this way at impact uh, so that you're hitting, because you, you want to be able to hit down on the golf ball in order to hit the ball first and then the turf. You, you, and that requires hitting the ground, but you hit the ground after uh, you hit the golf ball. When you look on the right, this is video I, t uh, I took of Tiger at the U.S. Open last June. And uh, if you look at the ground, you're going to see, you know, all of these, all of these are divots. Uh, every pro is taking divots when they hit an iron. Uh, you cannot hit the sweet spot of the club unless you are taking some turf. And uh, you, you have a reverse 
the shaft lane in your swing. I'll talk a little bit later in this video about why that is and, and what, what the correction is. You have a, a very good athletic swing. There's, you don't really have an athletic problem. You have a geometry problem that we need to fix. Here's Grant Waite hitting an iron shot. Um, and I have him right at impact. His left arm and shaft are basically right in line and his shaft is leaning towards the target. His hands are in front of the ball, so his low point is in front of the ball, so he'll hit the ball first and then the turf. So he'll take his divot after he hits the ball. He is hitting downward into that golf ball. And you have a that reverse angle, so you're hitting up into the ball and you, and you really don't take a divot. So one of the, the goals of hitting iron shots is that uh, before you get to impact, your hands have got to get in front of the golf ball. There's two things that help you get the low point in front of the ball. One is you want to have your weight on your left side and you want to have your hands in front of the ball. So uh, you need to learn the mechanics of how to do that uh, with the hands. The, what I've done here is draw a box from the center of your ankles to the top of your head to kind of document where your weight distribution is. Now you, you have more weight on your left side than your right side, so that's good. Um, I would like you to uh, do even more of that in your downswing. Try to move even stronger to your left side in your downswing. That will help also move your golf circle to the, to the left. You've got to get the low point of your golf circle in front of the golf ball and your golf circle is hanging back too much and so the low point of that circle is behind the ball and as your club comes down and around that circle and is approaching that low point before it goes back up again it, it arrives at the low point before it hits the ball and two things will happen uh, one that low point if it's actually um, touching the ground that then you will come in and hit the ground behind the golf ball. If you raise the circle up a little bit to avoid hitting the ground, then it's going to arrive at that low point and then be hitting up into the ball and that's when you can blade it or hit it really thin all the time. So the only way that you can uh, hit the ball on the sweet spot is to be hitting the ground after contact, putting the low point of that circle in front of the ball so you're hitting down and through the shot. So you can see how Grant has that left, that red line coming off his left foot is passing right through the, his belt buckle, right through the center of his hips. So he has, the average pro will have 85 to 90 percent of their weight on that left side at impact and you probably have 60, 65 percent. And So I would like that to go up a little bit. You don't have to be exactly like the pros, but um, uh, there's some things that you do in your backswing that make this difficult and I'll go over those in a minute. This is another shot from the fairway. I want to let you watch that. I'm going to put a little arrow where the ball is. And uh, you can see that there is no turf hit. You picked that ball very, very clean, and there was no divot. As Grant comes through, he's very extended right there. And you have a very excessive rolling of the arms through the ball. You can see how you, you have to really twist this left forearm very quickly right there. Your wrist cross very, very quickly. You, you have a kind of a snap roll swing. And uh, that's going to create a lot of chaos uh, at impact. And that you want to be able to consistently deliver the face angle that you want at impact during that fraction of a second, 400 microseconds, which is a thousand times faster than you can blink your eye. During that 400 microseconds, the ball is going to leave the face of the club and go in the direction it's facing during that moment. And uh, because of this excessive roll that you have, that face is chaotic and, and is never going to be consistently delivered with the same face angle every single time. 
because the rate of closure of that face is very, very fast. And the reason for it is your grip, and I'll cover that in a minute. Um, if you had a, a more correct grip, then you would eliminate the need for this uh, exaggerated uh, rolling of the, of the left forearm through impact. And uh, that is what's causing a lot of your issues. The other thing is that uh, you basically are only uh, a hands player. You, you don't really use your body as, as much as you could. You're not, you, you can see how Grant's has stood up and is very extended in this left leg and, and you have a collapsing left knee. You're not standing tall. Uh, you have Grant's spine angle is going this way and yours is, is almost going the reverse. Your, uh, there are some things that uh, you can actually learn these movements in, in a short amount of time once I show you some drills that reinforce these new movements. So those, those are the, the structure of your uh, and the foundation of, that you're swinging on needs to be redesigned just a little bit and uh, but also how you use your hands through impact need to be reworked a little bit. Also wanted to show you Tiger in that same position. Uh, you can see how he's has his belly button pushed past the box. He's pushing his middle his hips towards the target as he leans back. His spine angle is going this way. Uh, yours is kind of going this way. If you look at his uh, extension in his left leg, it's very extended, the, the knee is almost locked, and you have a collapsing knee, uh, and you're not extending and standing tall, you want to stand tall in that finish. As Tiger comes up, he finishes very tall, he's posting up, I'm drawing an arrow right through his left leg and it's passing right through the center of his hips and his back and his shoulders. And then as you take it up to your finish, uh, I just want you to get, you still have a little bend in your knee, and I just want you to stand a lot taller uh, in that, on that left side. Here we are at the setup, and one of the things that we want to do in our setup is, is prepare ourselves for impact. Everything you do prior to impact has the sole purpose of arriving at a fundamentally sound impact position. And if we're supposed to have shaft lean at impact, then it's, it's good to have shaft lean at the beginning, or at least a little bit. And, and you're, you have reverse, you have your hands behind the golf ball before you take it back. And so, Robert, you know, so you, you're setting your hands behind the ball. The other thing is you, you tend to set up with kind of a soft elbow here where you have kind of all these angles in your left side and, and Tiger is much more extended in that left arm. You want your elbows close to each other and yours are kind of separating and they're uh, getting away from each other. You want to feel like you're your left tricep is sitting more on top of your pectoral muscle, your left pectoral muscle, not off to the side of your chest, but more on top of your chest. Now, as Tiger goes back, you take him to, to the three position. That's when the left arm is parallel to the ground. If I drew a line up from his center of his ankle, his left hip is still on that line. His his knee right here is right on, is still pretty close to that line. Let's take you to the. And you can see how you can start to fall to the right. So when you're in that same position, you have a little more weight on your. You've really moved to the right. So if I were to draw, Tiger is still. Uh, Basically, his hips, if you look at his hips, his hips are still inside that box. And uh, you've kind of leaned and you're moved, your upper, ch your chest is almost outside your back foot. 
So you really swayed to the right. And there is no real value in moving to the right when so much of your weight has to be on the left foot at impact. Uh, you gain nothing by swaying to the right. And so uh, one of the things that will help you arrive with 80-85% of your weight on your left side is to not move so far off the, the left side in your backswing. I want to look at your grip real quick. Uh, I like the right hand. The right hand looks really good. It's, uh, you, your right hand is in a, a, a very common position of the tour players and where, how they put their right hand on there. You've got it in the fingers, you're pinching the club. Um, this crease right here is pointing back this way somewhere between your right ear and right shoulder. That's good. Now ideally we would like to have the left hand crease be pointing par almost parallel to the right hand crease, but your this crease is going almost at the center of your body. That's an indication that your left hand is in a weak position. And uh, what I would like to do is to you need to adjust this left hand so that it is turned over more. You need to rotate it clockwise so that we can see more of this label right here. Uh, and one of the reasons that you hit a lot of shots to the right is because you're not going to be able to square the club face up with this weak left hand. The other things that we need to work on are the structural things in your, your setup and your backswing. But uh, those are the things that we need to work on. And uh, there's a lot of, it's not enough for me to tell you about the fundamental. I have to help you experience the fundamental. Because it's only through the experiencing the fundamental that the light bulb comes on. And, and that, aha, uh, I know what that feels like now, and I like that. So that's the experience we have to have. And, and, I, and so though I need to show you these drills that will give you that experience. And once you can feel it, then you'll be able to repeat it uh, by just focusing on the memory of the feel. One other thing I want to mention before I wrap it up here, uh, on your driver, looking at your, your uh, impact data, you had a pretty good club head speed of uh, almost 95 miles an hour, um, the, but your carry distance was uh, pretty low. I can't remember what the wind direction was uh, on the range when we were doing that. Your spin rate was pretty high, 5100 um, RPM. I'd like if you could just, if you kept every all the other uh, data points exactly the same, but you lowered your spin rate to 3,000, you're going to add 20 yards to your drive. There's a big difference. Uh, you're losing a lot of your ball speed because the ball's spinning too much when it comes off the face. Um, one of the things that I'm looking here, your attack angle. Um, everything I said about the iron, where you need to hit down. Um, you do hit down on your driver and you need to hit up. Uh, so you have a, a two and a half degree downward angle into the drive on average for, of the six drives that you hit for flight scope. And uh, we need to be hitting up on the drive. Uh, that'll help in a lot of different ways, give you more carry for one, but it also helps lower the spin rate.